Hey everybody, it's Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel. If you're new to my channel, I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. That's what most of the videos on my channel are about. I also do some product reviews and some Monarch Butterfly videos. I'm very excited about today's video, the projects that I created. The first one was in response to a giveaway slash contest video I put out a few weeks ago where you, my viewers and subscribers, could comment three items that are in your craft stash that you're not quite sure what to do with. So I chose randomly a comment and that was Megan. Thanks so much, Megan. And I created something that I'm really happy with, with the three items that she listed in her comment. So thank you, Megan, and all of you who commented. I'm sure we'll be doing more Craft Your Stash giveaways in the future. I also included a bonus project of something I made with items in my craft stash that I've kind of been collecting and wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them. So I hope you enjoy that as well. If you are here for the first time or maybe have not subscribed, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoy this video and like other home decor on a budget videos, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me to grow my channel. So with all that being said, let's get on with today's DIYs. So the three items that Megan commented were in her stash were two round Dollar Tree signs, some tumbling tower blocks, and glass vases of any shape or size. So this is what I had. I didn't have the true round signs, but I had two of these ornament shaped ones. Some tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to also use some greenery, some nautical rope, and some pebbles, and various glass jars along with some chalk paint. So here, first of all, like I said, I didn't have just the circle signs. I did have two of these ornament shapes, so I'm just removing the metal from both signs. And then here I am clamping them together so that I can trim off the two bump outs for the ornament hanger. Um, so here I'm just gonna show using my Dollar Tree utility knife to score and then break off and trim up where one of them was, but I did that to both of those. Then I went ahead and unclamped them and just used some hot glue, some Gorilla hot glue to glue them together, decorated front to decorated front. And once again, using the clamps from Dollar Tree, I clamped them together until they were completely dry. Next, I took the brown tumbling tower blocks from two boxes, so 36 total of these ones that are brown, and I'm going to paint them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. Then I'm taking 45 of the natural colored ones and I'm going to stain them with the antique wax dark brown stain from Waverly. This is really easy to use and it doesn't smell like other stains. You just brush it on and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel or a rag. So this did take a while to paint the black blocks and then also to stain these blocks with the wax, but I was really happy with how the look turned out. So 
So here they are all finished, the 36 black blocks and the 45 waxed blocks. Next, coming back to my two circles, I'm going to give the top and the bottom and the edges two coats of my Waverly chalk paint in white. So once that was completely dry, I am now taking my stained blocks and I had measured this out ahead of time. It takes 15 blocks to go around the edge of the circle one time. So here you'll see I'm spacing them out, almost touching them together to fit them around the circle. And I kind of lined up the center of the block with the edge of the circle, if that makes sense. So the corners might stick out a little bit because they're rectangular and I'm going around a circle but you'll see I'm spacing them out and then I will need to kind of shift them closer together just to fit that 15th block in so the reason I did 45 blocks is I'm going to do three layers of this so once I get these spaced out correctly I'm going to use my Gorilla Wood Glue and glue them down and then my second row you'll see I'm shifting them over so that the middle of the top block is right at the space between and then my third layer is lined up above my first layer so I I actually really love how this turned out so next with my black blocks I'm going to glue them together in pairs in sets of two with my Gorilla Wood Glue and once these are dry I'm going to use these on the bottom just to raise up this stand a little bit so I decided instead of like making legs I decided for this to line up five pairs down the center and I'm going to kind of make a plus sign, or I guess it's an X if you turn the circle a little bit. But here I'm doing a line of five pairs and just trying to get ones that are flat so that this stand will sit flat on the table. Once those are glued in place, I'm then going to do two pairs to the right and two pairs to the left. So my first layer of black tumbling tower blocks would be 18 and then I did the exact same thing another row above to be the 36. Now I didn't really like that you could see that gap between the two circles so I decided to add from my stash some of this nautical rope just to go around that edge and give it more of a finished look. Now the third item Megan had on her stash list was glass vases. You could just put one on here and add some other greenery or flowers around it. I decided to use three different size of glass jars, glass vases, and just put a little bit of pebbles in the bottom. You could add candles to this and then just took some greenery that I had in my stash and kind of pulled some of the stems off and laid them in the center of the stand. And I really, really, really love how this turned out. Thank you again, Megan, for your comment and suggesting these three items. I hope you enjoy what I made using your stash.
And again, here is the finished product. I would love to know in the comments what you guys think of this DIY using Megan's craft stash. Now my bonus DIY is using some items from my stash. I had collected some of these box drawer things. Um, I have some rectangular wood slats and some large wood beads. Also some small, tiny candle cups. I decided I wanted to make some sort of drawer thing. I've, I've seen other YouTube videos, people, um, you know, kind of gluing these together, either in sets of nine or whatnot. Um, so I decided to do that type of thing. And then I'm going to add a little special touch once I get my wood glue going. So the first thing I decided to do was I kind of matched these up, the ones that um, fit together the best. I will say that these are not all exactly the same size and shape, but I did the best I could. So I glued the outside of the box together in pairs of two. Now these are the inside drawers. I'm using this Michael's Chalky Finish paint. It is, if you saw my video where I compared different brands of chalk paint, this was one that I did in that video. This color is called French Teal and I just thought it was really pretty. So I am painting the inside drawers with this paint. I did use two coats on the outside and one coat on the inside of all eight of these drawers. Now coming back to the outside boxes, I am in the pairs. I am using my antique wax again, like I did in Megan's DIY. And I'm doing this just on the outside and the back. I'm not going to paint or wax the inside of the boxes um, because the drawers are gonna be there anyway. So again, using the antique wax, you just brush it on and then wipe off the excess. And because you are wiping off that excess, you see the beautiful wood grain and it also allows it to dry a lot faster. Now what I decided to add to my little set of drawers here, I noticed that these rectangular wood slats that I purchased at Walmart in the craft section, but I know they are now carrying them at the Dollar Tree. I took four of these, I only show three here, but I'm going to leave two of them the regular size, and then I'm going to take two more, and you can see here I'm measuring it, and drawing a line and I'm going to use my miter saw and miter box and I'm going to cut two of these rectangles in half. So pardon the camera that is shaking because I'm sawing, but once I cut two of these in half, I will have two long pieces and four of the smaller pieces. And I'm also going to antique wax these pieces to match the outside of my drawer unit that I'm making. Now these are some tiny little, they're called candle cups. I got this bag on clearance at Hobby Lobby. They were a little rough on the top and the hole went all the way through. So I'm just sanding the top and then I'm going to use some of my little spackle here from Dollar Tree and I'm going to fill in that uh, top hole on all eight of these to make little drawer pulls for my boxes. These are some larger wood beads that I also had in my stash. I show eight here, but I only end up using six and I'm just painting them that same French teal color.
And coming back to my little knobs, now that the spackle is dry, I'm just using some sandpaper to rub off any excess and smooth out the top where the spackle is. And then I'm going to also paint these with the same French teal color so they match the drawers. Coming back to my boxes, I'm now going to glue two pairs together to make a row of four, and I'm going to do this twice. Again, um, if you don't have a set of these clamps, either the large ones or the small ones from Dollar Tree, they are an absolute necessity for projects like this so that things will glue together strongly and as straight as possible. Like I said, these boxes are not all perfectly the same size, but I think I did a pretty good job, especially with these clamps. As you can see, I was getting a little impatient with my glue bottle. It was getting a little uh, stuck, and so I just took the cap off. But going ahead now and making these two rows of four boxes, clamping them together, and letting those dry. Coming back to my drawers, I'm now going to just hot glue one of my little knobs into the center of each of my eight wood drawers. And you'll notice I did turn it around so that whatever cutout shape there was, I think there was a butterfly and a flower, um, those are going to be at the back of the drawer. And finally, gluing now my two rows of four together and again using the clamps to hold them very, very tightly so that everything can line up as flat as possible. Now, once those were dry, you can see what I'm going to do here with the pieces that I uh, cut. I'm, this is now turned on its side. So I'm using one of the half pieces and I'm gluing it to either side of the top. It'll make more sense when these are both dry and you'll see. So just imagine the top left and the top right, these are coming up. Then I'm taking the other two half pieces and I'm going to glue them together to each other just to make that center brace even stronger and I'm going to glue those right there to the center of the top of my boxes. And then finally with the two long pieces that I kept the size they were in the package, I'm going to put them like a shelf across the top. They're going to meet in the center there on top of the two half pieces that will hold the shelf up. And here's what the piece looks like with the shelves in place and the eight drawers. And then the last step is just to glue on those beads that I'm using as feet. You do not have to do this step. You could just leave it so it sits flat on the desk. But I just wanted that little extra decorative touch to have these four little feet to make it stand up just a little higher. So I'm just using wood glue again and I'm doing the two back ones, waiting for that to dry and then I'll flip the whole thing over to the front and do the other two feet. So here's with the back two feet and then flipped over without the drawers, the other two feet. And here is what it looks like finished. I absolutely love this. I'd love to know what you guys thought of these two projects. I love working with wood and coming up with creative new ways to use items from the Dollar Tree. 
So be sure to comment below which of these you liked the best. Let me know what's in your craft stash and maybe you'll be featured in a future video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.